Hi guys, welcome to another beer review and I think today will be the first Austrian craft beer that I've, I think I've actually tasted to be honest and might have uh, just casually outside of YouTube but I can't even think of any Austrian breweries. So this is definitely the first Austrian craft beer that I'm reviewing and just like craft brewers I've probably had some Austrian craft sort of stuff as well. Um, but I was in one of the local beer shops here in the city uh, more you know your local breweries and your macro stuff that sort of thing but they've got like a little bit of like a craft section where you can get like a Brooklyn Lager, Brooklyn Easy IPA um, you can get like Leffer um, you can get a couple of the Rana breweries from the um, manufacturer line as well as you know pretty much the core range from um, Crew Republic, so now I've got an outlet to buy Crew Republic, and yeah, I will be buying, you know, quite a few bottles of their double IPA in the future, because that was just fantastic. But um, I've forgotten the name of it, it's like a chain, but I think this is like the only one that's in the city of this chain. And uh, yeah, if I remember, I'll put the link down below, because I like to give credit where credit's due when it comes to not only the breweries, but also where I pick up some of the beers. And, uh, you know, just in case some of the people from Regensburg are watching this and they want a place to go to find some beers they might not be able to find anywhere else. <clears throat> so anyway, today we've got an IPA from the Stiegel Brewery, or, yeah, Stiegel Brauerei, from Salzburg. And this is a bottle of the Max Glaner's IPA in a little nifty looking bottle, uh, not 3, three litre, even though it looks a little bit smaller than that. It's amazing how you can get that impression from the shape of a glass and I don't know, it, stuff like that fascinates me. You know, I don't lose sleep over it, you know, that sort of thing, but when I see like a bottle and then another shaped bottle that are both the same size but you put them together and you think there's no way they're the same. It's just, I don't know, optical illusions can be fun. Um, where the hell am I going with that? Uh, but yeah, Indian Pale Ale, clocking in at, where is the ABV? Uh, do, 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 do. Please excuse me for a moment. Um, I can't seem to find an ABV for this beer. Uh, no, I'm not seeing any. That's weird. I'm sure there is, but I'm just too blind to notice it. And you don't really get too much information um, on the back either, um, aside from like a little chart of like how hoppy, how malty, that sort of thing. And yeah, oh there it is. It's right under where it says alcohol on the chart. Uh, go figure. Uh, Five point eight is that? It's a bit hard to see the blue writing on the black background, but um, yeah, under six percent IPA. And I do really like that artwork. I'm not too sure if this brewery is like a a big macro brewery and this is like the you know sort of crafty line or the a newer brewery or they've been doing craft beers for a while um, but you know links are down below if this beer and the brewery intrigues you but yeah fantastic artwork and that is another crown to keep so uh, yeah and you also get a nice foil label on the neck so let's get this beer opened Nice amount of carbonation there, not too much. Ooh, that smells nice. Yeah, but I am an IPA fanboy, so, you know, when you get those core IPA aromas, you know, you're going to get excited. So I'll just pour a little bit in the glass so I can give this a bit of a swish in a little moment. So in terms of colour, that is a nice sort of lemony, orangey sort of colour. Uh, it's got a nice amount of haze in there. Um, I think these are unfiltered beers, so there might be some uh, glunk. Yeah, there was some, maybe a couple bits of sediment there, I'm not too sure. But yeah, it looks really nice and vibrant on camera. It's a little bit more, um, not as intense when you look at it in person, but when you hold up to light, it's got this sort of like really nice strawy lemony colour. But yeah, opaque, nice amounts of carbonation there. And I would say it's got quite a bit of powdery sediment as well. So my pour wasn't really too aggressive, so not really got a head as such, more just like a slightly off-white lining. But uh, yeah, it certainly looks like a nice IPA so far. 
So let's give it a bit of a twirl and see what we get on the nose. Well, surprise, surprise, that rank trees fruit pastel sort of aroma. Definitely pick up maybe some watermelon. A little bit of mango as well. You, of course, get that grapefruit bitterness as well. A little bit of lime. Maybe like a sugared lime sort of aroma. Very tropical. And quite sweet as well. Uh, it says that it's... Well, it's got an IBU count of 45. And... Uh, yeah, it doesn't really tell you too much else about it. But yeah, you get that grapefruity, hoppy bitterness there, but not too aggressive. Nice and fruity. Papaya, that sort of thing. I'd say it's more of a fruit bell, but you do get those sort of like very slightly resinous, grassy tones in there as well. But yeah, it smells really, really nice. Puts me back in the mindset of summer already, even though I'm absolutely loving autumn right now. So, let's see if it tastes as good as it smells. Cheers. Well, you definitely get more bitterness, actually, on the palate. Right from the start. It starts off a little bit bitter, then goes really quite bitter towards the end. I wouldn't say it leaves you dry, but it almost does. But if I'm honest, the mouthfeel sort of ends, sort of like a, a soapy water sort of thing. It's got this slight, I don't know if, if this is the right word, but like maybe a slight powderiness in the mouthfeel. And it is a relatively light body for me anyway. Let's see what happens when I pour the rest in, see if I can get any change to that. I'm just going to glug it all in like that, give it uh, an absolutely phenomenal head, which is probably not going to work well with the beer at all. But uh, yeah, not too much has changed, in all honesty. Um, maybe just some slight bit of powdery sedimentation, light bubbles, and the, well, you can see what colour head it is. Very slightly off-white, it looks very, very foamy, but that's probably because I've twizzled it around, maybe a bit too aggressively. But yeah, let's... Yeah, and that head's really started to, you know, tone the beer down in terms of an aroma. Anyway, let's see if we can get anything else. I know it's not ideal, but that head has actually given it a little bit more of a body. It doesn't dry out as easily as it does. But yeah, flavour-wise, I'm getting a little bit of grapefruit. This like just basic hoppy bitterness, slight tropical tone. There's maybe a hint of spice in there. A little bit of pepperiness maybe, sort of like coriander leaf, that sort of thing. But then you do get that like fruitiness in there as well. It is more along the lines of a bitter IPA. Um, even though when you're smelling it, you're getting pure fruit bowls, so you expect one of these like newer, fruitier IPAs. But if you like your bitter IPAs, then you're probably going to like this a little bit more. Mouthfeel, the body could do with a little bit more oomph to it, to be honest. Flavour-wise, it's got those nice tropical flavours, but they are a little bit muted, and the, the bitterness does sort of overtake the flavour. If I'm being honest. I mean, it's not a bad beer. Don't get me wrong. It's not, you know, a drain pour. It's far from a drain pour. Uh, it's nowhere near being a drain pour. But, I mean, I paid probably a little bit more than I would have liked for a beer like this. But it's an experience to try an Austrian craft beer. And do you know what? Even if it was an awful beer, I'd still be interested to give more beers from the brewery a go. And of course, see what else Austria has to offer. But it's not the greatest of starts. It's a very drinkable beer. It's just... <laughs> with the IPA being as predominant now, in terms of style, 
you're always going to get really fantastic examples of the style and then a lot more average, below average sort of attempts at it. And this falls around, you know, that middle ground. Um, it would be good if you wanted to get into the craft scene, but that being said, you know, it's not giving you the most uh, exciting example of what an IPA can offer. But easy drinking, sessionable, you're not getting any of that alcohol in there. And uh, yeah, it just, it sort of feels like a session IPA to me. Like a 3% session IPA. That's what I'm getting. You get that slight soapiness there. But it's not unpleasant. And in terms of rating, uh, it's definitely a 6 out of 10 beer from me. So it's a bit of above average, uh, which is unfortunate. But you know what? I'd happily try it again, but there would be so many more IPAs that I could get my hands on that I would pick up before I try this one again. But uh, yeah, 6 out of 10, it's far from a bad score. Um, so make of that what you will. Um, so yeah, if you want to find out more about this beer and the brewery, links are down below. You might I know they've got another one of their beers in the shop. Uh, I think it's a wit beer, so that would be interesting to see an Austrian craft take on the wit beer. Uh, so look out for that beer review at some time in the future and potentially many more because, you know, I like the the marketing, the labelling of this brewery. I like the bottles. It's just a shame that beer specifically wasn't the most exciting IPA that I've ever tried. So, uh, yeah, 6 out of 10. If you've tried this beer, let me know your thoughts and opinions. If you've tried any more beers from this brewery or from Austria in terms of craft and macro, corporate, you know, let me know down below. I'm all about trying different beers. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching and I hope you'll join me in the next beer review. Cheers guys.